Hello everybody and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to turn the first of 13 laser cut blanks. Uh, this blank was made by Rick Cobb and Kenneth Wines and uh, they are available at Rick Cobb's website. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description of this video if you'd like to try one of these blanks. Uh, you might be nervous about trying them. You know, they are a bit more delicate than a standard straight up wood blank, but they're not as bad as you would think to turn. They're actually fairly easy. I put together a video on how to prepare them and there'll be a little more preparation on this one today, but uh, I really think you should give these a try. They are incredible when they're finished and the sense of uh, accomplishment and satisfaction that you will get from uh, turning one of these blanks, it'll be a huge boost to your skill level and it just takes you up a notch. I mean, these are, these are wonderful blanks. I'm gonna to get to turning. I've got my skew sharpened. It's ready to go and uh, let's make a blank. I got a little bit ahead of myself thinking I was ready to go ahead and turn the blank. What I wanna do first is I'm using some thin CA and I'm just going to apply a coat to the entire surface of this blank. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lock the little brick segments into the mortar segments uh, and it's gonna make it a little less delicate, you know, to make it more of a solid blank which will make it much easier to turn. This only takes a couple of seconds. Make sure you cover the entire blank. Let it soak for a little bit. I normally don't like to use activator, but in this case, I think it's probably gonna be okay if you give it a few minutes to soak in, because if you don't, it's gonna stay tacky for a while because you know I'm putting a very liberal amount of CA on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn it for a few seconds. Uh, and what that'll do is keep the glue from, or the CA from pooling on one side of the blank. When I feel like it's soaked in well enough, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some activator, and then we're gonna start turning. I've been rotating the blank for about a minute and a half. You can see some areas where it's actually starting to dry. Uh, I'm gonna continue to rotate it, and I'm gonna spray a little activator. Probably more activator than I need, but uh, we'll give it a couple of seconds for it to cure and we'll start turning. The blank looks really nice. It's pretty darn smooth. There's one little bubble of CA there, and uh, there's a little bubble right there. So that's pretty, that's what the activator will do if there's any, um, if the glue all flows to one side, you hit it with the activator, you're gonna get these little stalactites, um, but they'll turn right off. I didn't want the blank to be covered in them. It looks like I did a nice job because there's only a few, so they should turn away quite easily and we should have no issue. The turning of this blank went really well. It probably took me between a minute to a minute and a half to turn it down. I used a, a skew. I think you could use carbide. Um, I would recommend if you're using carbide though, turn the carbide up to a 90 degree angle uh, so that you put less of the tool against the blank. You'll get a cleaner cut uh, than if you use like the flat blade, you know, straight against a blank. What I'm gonna do now is I've got a, a great fit at my bushings. I'm happy about that. I'm gonna go ahead and put one coat of CA on here, a very thin coat, um, and I'm gonna let it dry naturally, no activator this time. Once it's dry, I'll come back and we'll begin sanding the blank. The reason for the single coat of CA is to stop the red wood, uh, the red colored wood from bleeding into the lighter wood, which it will bleed ba poor, uh, badly if I don't uh, put something on there to seal it before sanding. My lathe speed has been slowed to about 800 RPMs. One quick coat is all it takes, and in about 15 to 20 seconds, this blank will be completely dry and I can begin sanding. I'm gonna start sanding with a 280 grit of sandpaper, and I'm gonna, of course, use uh, an acrylic blank as a backer to make sure I remove the tool marks. See all the shiny areas? 
We've got to get rid of those. We want this thing to be flat and uh, scuffed from end to end. I'll go ahead and finish up sanding off camera and I'll come back and show you this blank right before I begin putting a finish on it. Sand it all the way out to 600 grit and you might notice, I don't know if it's gonna show up on the camera or not, but there's a little bit of dust between the bricks and the, um, the mortar, you know, because they, they fit relatively tightly, the pieces, but there's a little bit of a gap there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, this is a soft bristle toothbrush. I picked these up at Walmart and I get like five or six of them for like a dollar. Uh, they're really cheap. I use them all over the shop. And when you get them that cheap, you know, you don't worry if something happens to them. But I'm just brushing to try to get some of that uh, that dust out from, you know, in between the, uh, the bricks and the mortar. I've removed as much of the dust as I can with the brush. And now I'm just going to use some denatured alcohol on a paper towel. That looks good. Let me start the lathe and we'll run... Uh, with the or we'll clean with the lathe moving. Looks pretty darn good. Um, I should have probably put it on the nonstick bushings before I did this, so I'm going to have to touch it to move it. Um, not going to worry too much about that because uh, I'll clean it again right before I put a finish. So let me go ahead and swap these uh, turning bushings out for nonsticks, and uh, we'll come back and put the first coat of CA on our blank. The blank does have a little bit of wobble to it. It's not going to hurt anything. We're running slow enough where it won't be an issue. I want to clean it again because I had to handle the blank quite a bit uh, to get it onto the bushings and to line it up, at least this well, which is not perfect, but it's good enough. All right. Now I've got my acetate brush that I'm going to use just to knock the uh, lint off from the paper towel. Always be sure to work closely around your bushings. You want to make sure you get all that lint, otherwise it will it will stick in your CA and it will be a blemish in your finish. I like how that looks. I'm going to get uh, tape on my finger. We'll get some cardboard to protect the ways of the lathe, and let's go ahead and put our first coat of CA on the blank. First coat of CA going on. I'm going to go ahead and put my standard CA regimen on here. That will be five coats of thin, five coats of medium, and then I'm going to go ahead and micro mesh the blank. Now, this blank is going to require more than the standard coats that I normally put on the blank. And the reason why is there are some little gaps between the mortar and the brick. Uh, so you're going to have some little indentions in your blank. So if you just put your standard finish regiment on there, you let it dry. When you polish up the pin and you look at it under light, you're going to see those little, those little concave areas. So I like to go ahead, do my standard regiment then micro mesh it that levels everything out makes it a little easier to fill those those uh, low areas and i come back and put two three four additional coats whatever it takes to get it level micro mesh a second time and that really enhances the overall look of the blank it will just make it pop and look so amazing with that many coats of ca so i'm going to turn the camera off i'm going to finish up my normal regiment We'll micro mesh it. I'll come back and show it to you right before we do the second series of uh, CA applications. I have finished my CA regiment and I finished micro meshing the blank. And I'm not sure how well you can see it on the video, but there's just the just the slightest little indention there and there. And as you rotate, each time you get to one of the mortar areas, this one looks pretty good, no issues there. But each time you get to one of the mortar areas, if you slow down and let the uh, light above your lathe reflect. It should make a nice straight line, and when it when it's crooked or or you know bumpy, you can tell that the blank needs a little more attention. These are really light, so I think probably two to three. I'm going to go with three more coats of medium, uh, and then we're going to come back and micro mesh the blank for the final time, and it's going to look absolutely amazing. I put three more coats of medium CA on. I did use activator between them. I've only found one area right there where there is just an ever so slight indention. The rest of the blank looks wonderful. So we are going to apply one more coat of medium and then I'm going to micro mesh this blank. I'll come back and show it to you right before we start buffing. And I, oh, one other thing, I did go ahead and put the uh, CA on with my turning bushings. I didn't bother to change out to the non-sticks. It won't hurt anything uh, because we have a tight fit. But uh, what we can do is uh, tap these on the ways of the lathe, and that will break the CA. And I'll show you that uh, when I take it off of the lathe. 
The finish on this blank looks absolutely phenomenal. It is so worth taking just a little bit of extra time and dialing these blanks in because they make such a beautiful pen when they're complete. People love them. It's going to get a lot of attention. So you want to take the time uh, and, you know, the attention to detail is what's going to make this a winning pen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and buff it up and then uh, we'll come back and meet at the assembly table where we'll put this blank into a kit. I wanted to share something with you. You'll notice that I have my turning bushings on here and I went ahead and applied the additional CA with these bushings and now they're glued to the blank. The easiest way to get those off is a quick tap on your uh, lathe and they pop loose. If you don't want to tap them on your lathe, use any hard surface, any hard metal surface in your shop. It could be a table saw, a bandsaw, uh, but something with a hard metal surface. I'm going to square these ends to get rid of the CA fingernails and uh, we'll get this on the buffing wheels and buff this wax off of it. We're ready to assemble our blank into a kit. I'm going to remove both of my bushings. We're going to take our deburring tool and we're going to deburr both ends. That'll help us start our components, get a much nicer fit. Let's clean it out with a brush and get rid of some of those brass filings. With the blank deburred, I'm looking at it and I can see that the uh, mortar is thinner on this end than this end. So I chose the more delicate end for the nib into my pen. I've put a bushing back in that end of the blank and we're going to put our cap clip assembly on. Now there is this blank. I can't find a flaw in it. So there's nothing to cover up with the clip. So just place it on there. Uh, make sure it looks it's symmetrical and press it together. Something that I've been doing when I'm pressing my uh, blanks into the uh, kits is I rotate them periodically while I'm pressing. And my theory on that is if I happen to start crooked, as I rotate it, I'll be able to see that and I can adjust and fix it before I drive it in crooked and end up splitting the thin wood uh, of the blank. We have an incredible fit at the uh, cap end of the blank. Let's go ahead and press the nib end in. With the ink refill in the nib section and the transmission connected, I like to work the transmission just a little bit because they come with grease packed in them. Uh, but that grease has not been worked in. So by twisting it a few times, uh, extending and uh, retracting the ink refill, uh, you'll work it in and you'll get a nice smooth um, motion with your, uh, with your ink. We'll go ahead and slide the nib section into the body. And I'm going to wipe this pen off because uh, when you work with the transmission, you get that grease on your fingers. And I've touched the blank, which is going to dull it. So I'm going to wipe my hand off and I'm going to wipe the blank off. And we'll come back and take a much closer look at it. Here's a closer look at the pin. It is beautiful. The bricks are made from red heart. The mortar is made from maple. And the pin is just absolutely incredible. I really hope you enjoyed my video on turning this brick themed laser cut blank. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You need to check the website out and you need to challenge yourself with one of these. If you're ready to take a step up from turning just regular wood and regular acrylics and try something different, Laser Cut will offer you a nice challenge and it will really up your skill level. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. You come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.